listening to Off Color, a podcast where we keep it real when we talk about race and identity. I'm your host, Rebecca Henderson, a.k.a. The Tan Tigress, and I have the impeccable Janice of European descent, Motsko. <laughs> hey, Janice, so glad that you're here. Hey, everybody. Happy to be here. All right. This episode of Off Color was actually recorded live at the House of Pod following a screening of the documentary All Mixed Up, Our Changing Racial Identities, directed by me, Rebecca Henderson, a.k.a. The Tan Tigress. You're going to love the conversation. It was rich and beautiful. We had Annalise Harris of Curls on the Block, Rebecca Nunziato of House of Pod, as well as our studio audience. Enjoy. All right, so we just wrapped up a little, a little, a very intimate screening of my film, and we are so lucky and fortunate to have two incredible guests with us this evening. Um, we have the wonderful and talented Rebecca Nunziato, who is the community outreach organizer, community coordinator here at the House of Pod. In addition to that, we have the one and only Annalise Harris. She's an author. She is um, founder of the nonprofit Curls on the Block. She is just generally a dope queen, so to speak. And I'm so grateful that uh, you guys are here to talk about, you know, if anything came up, emotions after after watching that film. Um, I'm going to start with Rebecca because I know that this the, you're in the film. That day that we interviewed you was August 12th, and that was actually the day of the Charlottesville, the fight and the day that Heather Heyer died. Uh, mm. So we were, which I think is kind of poignant in some ways, right, where it's like, that day we were talking about those things and we all knew what was going on and we knew she had been killed. So it was a pretty emotionally um, challenging day, I think, for, for everyone. But I, I don't know if you remember that that was happening at that time or like if that was anything. I think what's wild is that it feels like for me that was the be- not the beginning, but it was a it was a marker. It was a milestone in my ethnic journey because you were asking questions that nobody asked me. Um, so many people are just happy to like, let's just sweep whatever you are, your ambiguity, like under the rug. And at the same time, it felt like there, it was this moment going into the 2016, like post 2016 elections where think like I was passing through the world kind of in this trajectory towards myself and towards my truest self and towards my identity as a person of color while the world was pushing so hard into this white supremacy and yeah, just like this quiet racism that existed for so long. And that of course, like we've experienced, but people like my white mom and family didn't even acknowledge as existing. So it's just interesting to think about this time lapse of me moving into this journey of like waking up, waking up, waking up, standing up, like coming into my body and the world just like, pushing so hard against that rejecting Mm. that well I'm really glad that you say that because sometimes I guess I do wonder I'm like is my work having any impact at all (laughs) right it heartens me to hear that it that it had a positive impact on you like exploring your your identity at this time um Annalise I wanted to ask you because you saw the film at the premiere and you've seen you've seen it a couple times Mm -hmm. and so I'm just wondering if there's anything um coming out of it Like for you, anything new or just like thoughts that came up as we were, as we were screening it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I've been mixed my whole life. Um. (laughs) (laughs) But even just um, to to be honest, like even saying it, right, is Mm -hmm. I have always um, said that I'm um, black and Puerto Rican. And so um, I convinced a friend of mine uh, to join me. I knew he was mixed, and he's native and Oglala and uh, and Mexican. So um, I was like, dude, finally a friend who would totally understand this. And, you know, we, we came, and we were both really impacted by being able to look around in the crowd and just be like, oh, my gosh, we're mixed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and just, like, mixed families, you know, who also understand the struggle and, and just respect that, hey, you know, we're trying to exist. Mm-hmm. I will say, like, when I was younger, it was like, okay, well, do I say Puerto Rican and black or black and Puerto Rican? Mm-hmm. If I have an emphasis on one, does that mean I'm not accepting the other? Or, you know, does it mean I feel like I'm more exotic or whatever, you know? <laughs> um, I remember when with dating, I know all of these topics came up in the interview interviews you uh, were able to have and 
um, I remember a guy in high school was like, you know, you're perfect because because you you're black, you know, your mom's black, so you're black, but you don't look black. And so Mm. it was like, what? Um, and, and when he said that, I was like, what the heck? And, um, that was definitely a very poignant moment in the dating experience. Like my experience still is I'm very conscientious of, you know, men who maybe have a fetish or have a preference that I think is, um, detrimental to not only it limits me, uh, to an extent and also plays into a lot of the colonized you know, beauty standards that we have, like, oh, I have green eyes, I'm a fair um, tone, skin tone. There was always an element, especially as I just became more aware and just, I've always been pretty active in social justice and like understanding systems and, um, but dating, I'm like, man, are you really liking me for, you know, me or the chance that your kid could have green eyes? Honestly, I just shared with a friend the other day, I was like, it would be terrible uh, if Mm -hmm. I said I want a kid that looks like me. The likelihood of that happening, if I were to be with a man with more melanin or brown eyes, darker brown eyes, I I mean, I would totally negate uh, half my community, you know, and that means something to me. I'm like, I would one, never say that. And but I, I mean, of course you want a kid that looks like you, right? That's, that's sometimes what you, I, I'm just talking to that point. Like, imagine if some, if I said that, like you, mm-hmm. other people, oh, I want a baby that's mixed. I've even mm-hmm. heard, oh, you know, women that. saying it's that. I'm like, thing. okay, but you're not the mixed kid that has to deal with your fetish, um, you know, and limitations on, you know, just why you like this person because of what they look like only. Yeah. So eh, it, the film definitely brought that out. And I think even the spaces that you've been creating more than one box, you know, uh, means something. Hey, I have been more than one box and I, I can be fully embraced and I can be proud and not have to choose. And um, some, yeah, for me, that has always been like, I don't want to have to choose. I am both. And being Puerto Rican, not being able to speak uh, Spanish fluently, you know, or regularly. And I was like, yo, I'm like barely Boricua here, you know? Like, <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> well, Henderson over here, right? Everybody <laughs> thinks I'm Puerto Rican. <laughs> And I actually yes. <laughs> learned to speak Spanish specifically because of that, because I grew up in oh, New wow. York. And yeah. so people really, you know, yeah. that's like a thing. It's a real thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, and, and for me, it's not, it's something I'm I'm accustomed to, but at the same time, there is something to that where you're like, no, I'm black. Mm-hmm. And and even someone like me who's really proud to be black, mm-hmm. it's 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 hurtful that people like don't think you are yeah. or I, I, don't, I don't even, sometimes I don't even know. This is actually like real emotional for me. Mm-hmm. So you're hilarious. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> to talk about it. No, it's it is. It's super hard because I mean, it's, I don't think you realize how much your identity is based on what other people see in you mm-hmm. until that's messed up, you know, until like right. you get some feedback that you're like, Whoa, you're not seeing me and you're not seeing like what, I'm made up of like I've particularly struggled a lot I know this is true for you too in a lot of white institutions where because of the way I talk or the way I dress or because of my degree you know like whatever these things are they think oh you're not one of those Mexicans you know and so we're gonna like and so I get I'm the token like and that's an uncomfortable place to be like I get into spaces that none of my cousins are gonna get into and what do I do with that? You know, like it's this, it's this really complex ex- emotional experience every fucking day. Yeah. Something that you said um, about like what that bring, brings up for you and being in those spaces, uh, there was recently an article going around and it was um, about being a buffer. Mm-hmm. And one of the yeah. things, like we're typically, people who are closer to whiteness, like we'll get hired for the job and then they'll be like, but well, we have diversity. We have a black person and here she is. It's Rebecca. And everyone's like, she's black. And it's, you know, and I'm, my mother told me, my white mother, she would always tell us, she would say, you can be whatever you want in the world, but on your applications, you are black, black, black. Mm. And it was kind of a joke in our family, but at the same time, it was the truth. It's like, there's not a lot of benefits, right? So like Mm. at that time, especially when I was, when I was growing up, that's what, that's what we did. And that I don't, I hate to bring this up, but I don't because I like to keep it controversial. <laughs> Let's talk about Elizabeth Warren real quick and that idea of her identifying, right, as a Native American. And I know, I know it's tough. 
So I because I, of the people are so mad about that. People, and she apologized, but ooh, boo, you got I know. some scholarships, so, bro. <laughs> that and to me, that's the hard part because in initially, so when that first broke, right, I was like, no, Elizabeth Warren, boo, like, and that was my whole thing. And then I seriously was like, <laughs> she was like, I'm gonna forgive student loans, give you universal child care, and I was like, you know what? You Elizabeth ain't that Warren. bad. I'm she like, ain't okay, that bad. Yeah. Me too. But I think that that's real though. Yeah. In that, it's like. And I receive, I've received um, critiques on that, mm -hmm. on being like, well, how could you? And like, what if she had done blackface? And then how would mm -hmm. you feel? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, the fact is she didn't do blackface. The fact is she thought she was Native American and she did know it was wrong. Mm -hmm. Like to get a scholarship and to get those things based on like her like indigeneity, then she has no relationship to like that tribe or anything. Mm -hmm. So I feel like... I wonder if she would have been accepted if she, you know, had been accessing, you know, her whole family. Yes, I think so, because mm -hmm. that is something that I've heard often from my, like, indigenous brothers and sisters, that it's more about, like, the relationship mm -hmm. with the tribe and knowing, like, I believe in kind of, like, a new tribalism. So I think that we're trying to be these globalized, like, global citizens, and it's not working because our brains don't work that way. Mm. And we actually don't, especially because of white individualism, we don't know how to love people, and we don't know how to support people, and we don't know how to be empathetic. But I think, actually, that's why I really support, like, groups that are just for people of color or just for black women or just for Latinx, like, people. Yeah. Because it teaches us how to actually connect with each other. And then from like actually feeling like they commented in the film, like being seen, heard, like being humanized. Yeah. Then out of that grounding within some, some sense of tribe, you then can love other people outside of that community. I think we've lost an ability to actually, we don't have that in our families anymore. We don't have that in our neighborhoods anymore. Like we've lost the ability, like the gifts of tribalism. So I'm going to push back on that. Please. And I think little lady here got something to say. Yeah. Come on up. <laughs> that is mostly in the US, like you were talking about community, but and like people like, uh, like neighbors and stuff like that, mm -hmm. like talking to each other and like connecting and like tribalism, but you see it in a lot in like, outside of the US. Mm -hmm. So like, why is it that like the US is an issue with that? Yeah. And I mean, it's neocolonialism, right? Like we're just so disembodied, disconnected, like we don't know how to have relationships, which is kind of to this idea of like, the tribal identity, and meaning like a specific tribe, right? Yeah. Like, I actually think that white folks, all of us, like on both sides, my white side and my Hispanic, like Latinx side, like I want to be connected to the tribes yeah. that I come from because at the end of the day, like we all come from an indigenous ancestry. That is and, correct. And that's where I think <laughs> there's, there's a gift is to know that. Because if we're like, oh, these indigenous people, like, no, you're indigenous people too. You just don't know it. Because at a certain point, they were like, you're white. They're not. And that was the like, right. that was the dividing line. So, and one was good know. and one was bad. So yeah. to me, it's not yeah. very much a secret as to why. Okay. Like, no, people, no, you want to benefit and you yeah. want to survive in this nation that was the print. It started on free labor. <laughs> like It there's... started with a genocide, followed up yeah. by some free labor, followed up by yeah. continuous um yeah. marginalization of Good certain question. populations yeah. and so when you yeah. w yes here we have a and the reason the difference in the united states i believe my theory mm -hmm. is it all goes to chattel slavery and so like because you'll see it in the caribbean nations you see it in latin america um the u.s was the only country where slavery expanded Expanded mm. after the transatlantic trades, a slave trade was ended. So that's every other country. Oh, slavery w was uh, pretty much done, and there was obviously issues on in the country that they had to deal with. But we were the only country still put making slavery bigger. Like, oh, you're born into it now. Yeah. It's not just yeah. person captured forced to endure outrageous, you know, living conditions and work for free and for nothing. And, um, and then it ended. No, it, we, we kept going. Mm -hmm. Listen, You're slavery never ended. It just got amended. Okay. Don't get yeah. me started. Oh my God. No, but when you say that though, that piece about people being indigenous, I love this because we were watching that Klaus movie on Netflix. Did you guys see it? It's like real cute. I'm not gonna lie. I need your password. It's hella cute. It. It's hella <laughs> cute. Anyway, but one of the things is that they have these like Lapland, it's in Lapland. And then my husband, who is mixed he's Jamaican Scandinavian and, and Jewish and he was like showing me this video and I felt a little bit like honestly ignorant because I was like 
I was like, they lived in teepees up in Lapland? That's wild. Like, mm. you know, they're in teepees. They're, like, playing the drum. They're, like, singing all these songs. They're chasing the reindeer. Yeah. And I and so, like, <laughs> but that's my my feeling for our, our white brothers mm-hmm. and sisters is I want them to yeah. connect with that because the truth is, as you said, we all do come from that indigenous culture. And I just wish people would would connect to that more yeah. would explore that more but without it having but we, but it's impossible because yes. of the framework of white yes. of of the ideology exactly. of white supremacy right like you can't again and that's the issue with elizabeth warren right you can't just like claim that and then you know act like nothing else happened after that right yeah. so you have to have that yeah. fuller picture but i do think that it helps to remember that like we are we come from an ancestry before this too like I think that's really important not to negate what has happened in between but to give context to it right like my white mama needs to understand that like she had ancestors that lived off the land in Norway that's why like my ancestors that lived off the land in what is now South Texas are equally as human as her ancestors Mm. you know from her motherland and that that's like that she's actually lost and by proxy I've lost Mm -hmm. the gift of those people too. Like I wish we weren't just white, you know, like, yeah, we have to talk about it that way now, but there's something beautiful that's been lost. Yeah. The terminology white in general is made up obviously, Mm -hmm. but it became all encompassing and it did eliminate history for a lot of people. (laughs) So that's something too. I have made this argument before, but I wonder, I feel like mixed race people think about their race more than so-called monoracial people. Mm. So that's something that I, I, I don't know. know. What was seen in the film, right, was some when we think about like our parents who are mm. monoracial, right, is like at least for my parents' generation, like they didn't they didn't know what to do and they weren't having the conversation. I mean, mm. I was in a wide ass community in Colorado. Yeah. So like it wasn't like there were other people doing similar things, but for uh, for them it was like it's better to just raise them as white as possible. And mm. my dad struggled with that as a monoracial person, but he also didn't want me and my sisters to go through what he went through. And oh. I think that's like, that's the wrestling thing is like, I don't, I, he definitely thought about his race, but it wasn't, I, I guess the question is like, was it as complex? Mm. You know, because people were right. calling him names for Mexicans yeah and he's like well I am a Me- like I am Mexican and but in for him the nationality was more complicated than like the ethnic racial identity he had right. the culture he mm-hmm. had the mom who spoke Spanish mm. I don't like like y'all I had to figure out what's my language what's my ethnicity what's my like I have to sit in Spanish class and learn this stuff mm-hmm. and feel very confused um kind of to like all three of you but then also for Becca um as far as like Mexican identity and also like white American identity Mm. um, and how complicated that is because it's not just one thing, especially for like Mexican. Um, It's just like mestizos, which are like natives who, you know, or people who've migrated to Mexico and stuff like that. And same thing with the U.S. uh, with people who are American white. They're not just like from one part of Europe or from this or that like well I guess let me put it for just like the white Americans like um would that like is that considered like a mono thing if you're come from like mixed like countries in Europe Swedish Scottish yeah like Swedish like (laughs) Italian at one point wasn't considered white no so it's like so it's mostly I'm trying to figure out like for those kind of people like what is the space for them? Because I feel like there is no space for them because they're being pushed out from all these other spaces that are inclusive for like people of color. But would you consider them people of color because they come from different like... No, I wouldn't. If you look white, you're white. And so like even my kid, right? Mm -hmm. If my kid is white... But he's white and black. He knows, like, where he comes from and all that. He's white. And this used to drive me crazy because my father would say that. He'd be like, well, what's passing? He's like, if you look Mm -hmm. white and people think you're white, then you're white. And so, like, Mm -hmm. for me in my life, I'm getting off, but I'd like to talk about myself. Mm -hmm. But it's because, like, I because people were always asking me, what are you? And because I never felt white, my mom was white, but I never felt white myself. Um, And I didn't feel like I was being perceived that way. So... Here's my answer. Uh-oh. I'm she's gonna. So, she's so thoughtful. I'm gonna nuance this shit. So okay, hit it. No, <laughs> practically, realistically, today in our current reality, no. But I think this is where we need to elevate our racial consciousness. Is mm. that race is a construct? 
but we can't pretend like it doesn't exist. That's like not the answer either, right? So it's not like, oh, we're going to be like colorblind, right? But <laughs> that's the whole point, I think, of why like my Swedish Norwegian mother needs to be in touch with her Swedish Norwegian history. Like that's been erased. It's been erased differently than the way that like my dad's Mexican humanity really has been erased in this country and largely throughout the world. But ultimately, like I think that's the the bigger that's like the big goal is like this reclamation of of who we are right. and that we are grounded in like places and times and migration stories and in in peep in like com- and it's not all pretty right like I want to talk about the fact that I don't know exactly who like where exactly from Mexico my people come from which is a whole other problem but the people of like the pre-colonial times like there were some beautiful things they were doing like there were some beautiful things there was also some ugly things they were doing and so we can't like romanticize it we can't demonize <laughs> it like we have to talk about human sacrifice like plug that's my next podcast yeah. but oh. there's some but i i want to know those things so that i can own them and i want and i hope that other people want to like have that curiosity i think that curiosity is is a part of like the healing story and, I don't know. It's a little pie in the sky. No, but my <laughs> well, my husband is like that though. My husband is is very interested in all of his, of who he is, mm. right? And so, like, he is interested in in Finnish culture and and Jamaican culture and his Ashkenazi Jewish roots, mm. right? So, and so we're doing that for our son, where we're trying to raise him with all of these things and let him know, like, this is who you are. It's really beautiful. Mm. Oh. Something else. Please do. <laughs> so, um, as for that was like. The first part, like the white <laughs> Americans, but the second part is Mexican Ameri- or mm. Mexican people in general because they're also Colonized. mixed, yeah. you know. Um, oh, yeah. And how is it that they also have European and stuff like mm-hmm. that? And a lot of people in the U.S. Yeah. like have European stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but how is it that they are seeing of people of color, especially because some Mexicans are like some of them are white, fair, and has blue they're, eyes and they're blonde German. Hair. So I lived in Monterrey. And there, the people are lighter. Yes. And they have lighter eyes. There's a lot more blonde hair and stuff. Not saying that there's nobody like indigenous or with a darker complexion, but like it was a it was a noticeable difference. Yeah. And I also felt, and for me, they didn't think I was a Mexican. I'll tell you that right now. They could call me Shakira. It was like wild. No, but I didn't feel <laughs> like I fit in there either yeah. as like a person, you know. But I always think like. I bet, like, if I went to Brazil, I'd feel, like, real good. Like, I, th- I think. I don't know. I've never been there. Or Cuba? <laughs> I've been to Cuba. Cuba. Yeah. I, uh, pe- yeah. people a lot of colors there. Yeah. So, I yeah. I think, I, I think that the biggest thing for me is, like, colorism. Because yeah. there, I mean, oh, yeah. in India, there's people who are, like, you know, uh, if you're darker skinned in India or in Mexico and stuff like that, um, you're seen as poor mm-hmm. and not smart and this or that or just like they call you derogatory terms um, and I feel like in a sense like that's kind of what it feels like what it's becoming or it is um, apart from like the racial aspect because someone can be the same like uh, DNA. DNA and stuff like that and have like different yeah. skin color um, but I think the I just don't understand why, uh, like, white, um, your like mixed European people are seeing like as, like, I mean, yes, they're white passing, but like, why are they not welcomed more, especially if they're wanting to be uh, a part of like a, like affinity groups, yeah, like personal, yeah. like, kind of like more so like in people of colors groups and stuff like that, um, if they have some sort of like. I've never met these people, girl. Have you met them? Like a dark Polish woman? No, no, no. She's saying just who want to be included, not based, not because of their skin color. Yeah. Like so, if because I feel like at a certain point, like Italians and Irish people weren't considered white. Right. So like, why aren't we like? Because now they are white, yeah. and it's so, been a long but, time. Yeah. Yeah, but then at some point, I feel like we're also gonna be considered white. Yes. So uh, who is us? 
No, the heck Maybe I'm not. Maybe not you, but I and mean, you know Rebecca why? Might be moving you know why? That. Despite having lighter eyes than it, well, I don't know how much mm. mirror eyes are, but uh, my hair. There's yeah. no way. Yeah. There's there's going to be other factors that, despite skin color, um, and to, to in my opinion, to answer your question, yeah, like Puerto Ricans have every color. Mm-hmm. You know, Jamaicans and also, Car- Caribbean people, any are colonized really, nation. Yeah, actually, yeah, we so, can yeah, guarantee, okay. which is all, of, but all like, including the U.S. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I just think that we are just too far removed for individuals who have benefited for centuries at this point, um, and who are white appearing and, and have never had any prior connection to folks of color, um, I don't think that they would be very one comfortable and they would probably want to create their own affinity group personally. I think yeah, that I th- there would be a place for that. Like, Hey, yeah. I never knew about my Finnish yeah. side yeah. and this is me exploring it in this space. I don't think it would be fair for them to end up. Cause what happens? I feel like they take over the conversation they do. Yeah. and you're just like, dang man, like, yeah, yeah you're not well, followed in the store because you're Finnish. Exactly. No. Polish. And I think so shout out to building bridges y'all. Cause they do some good work around this stuff with white folks where they do affinity groups and they do, I mean, ideally you'd have affinity groups for each kind of identity, but it's really like people of color and white people. And the point is that that's not exclusionary because like, you got to do your work. And like I was in an affinity group with other mixed people and we got to do our work. Like we got to think about like what, like what we're talking about. Like what does it mean that I do pass or that I am lighter skinned or that I had the privileges of having a white mom? Like, Mm -hmm. you know, that's the work we have to do. And so I don't think, I think the issue is that it feels exclusionary to white people, people that, you know, are white and what we mean by when we say white, because there's never been a space that they weren't included in. And so that's, I think, so much of this work <laughs> is deconstructing this white dominance, like, especially... Entitlement yeah, to an the, extent. Yeah. Well, and we just, should like, be able to be there. My great, yeah. great, great... Okay, yeah. sit yeah. down. You don't and, even know his name. And even people of color... <laughs> <laughs> even people of color sometimes feel like, wait, why aren't the white people here? This feels weird. Like, isn't this segregation? But it's honestly, my experience in those groups have been so healing because for once I did not have to, you know, look out for (laughs) Sally's white tears or like, you know, or like explain to so-and-so like what it's like to, yeah, to like have to deal with these things. And it's so freeing. Like I, you don't get it unless you get it. Like it's so freeing to be in that space. And I actually think that it's the best thing we can do. So there's also a, a, there's a difference between segregation and yeah. congregation, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And so I just, just recently I was, um, I'm working with this organization called Creative Strategies for Change. And I, I, I went to their facilitators workshop training mm-hmm. this past weekend. It was incredible. So I cannot like shout them out enough because I feel like, that space was so healing and amazing for me that like I was only supposed to go Friday night and I ended up going all day (laughs) Saturday and all day Sunday also because I just needed that healing space and one of the things we did was this idea of like race caucusing and getting together affinity groups yeah the affinity groups and they said POCs you know people color and the white people right (laughs) and so Mm -hmm. for me that's always been I will always go with people of color, right? And I I asked for a mixed group mm. in the group that we were in and it was it was really beautiful, honestly. Like people were sharing stories that were like really touching and you could tell like they'd just never been in a space like that and they wanted to to share and talk about it. And though what I what I realized as we we're in the group though, every one of us was half white. Mm. And so that's a different thing. It's like when your mix doesn't include white, what does that mean? And I feel like we're always sort of centering this, but (laughs) there's two reasons for it. Well, one is because of the anti-blackness. But I feel like that that's a big part of like the mixed race story. Ultimately, it comes down to like people being anti-black. Annalise, do you have any thoughts on that? Um, Yeah. And I mean, you see it in, to your point about just even colorism, we see it in our own communities and, and you have, and, and there's some books that I know I really attribute to really bringing out some of my feelings in the work that I've done, you know, in a processing who I am and understanding it's okay to exist, how I am. Uh, um, The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison Mm -hmm. and even um, Coffee Will Make You Black. And um, actually, 
uh, this newer book, it's uh, the Children of the Blood and Bone. And mm. to be honest, like it, it's really underneath, like it's really there, but it's like not saying it because yeah. it's all based in Nigeria. But anyway, um, the bluest eye finally spoke to. I was like, oh my gosh, this character in this book is depicted one not being liked because she's lighter, and then two, no one knew the abuse she was experiencing, mm. and then um, also it was able to identify it would highlight how you know the other kids were looking at her but ha- why they they were also like oh I wish I were her too so then it, it was really beautifully written something pretty tough to read by yourself I would I know some of the high schools are reading it as freshmen and I'm like I don't really actually think that's the best thing but yeah. part of the work that some white people have to do are people who are trying to explore like hey I actually <laughs> have a heritage that's what your point is yeah. I have a heritage and I haven't understood it yeah. um just even like coffee make you black there's been a lot of statements that goes to your question is are we anti-black yes mm-hmm. we are yeah. coffee will make you black was a deterrent for kids not to drink coffee because they didn't want to become blacker right yeah. that's crazy but i absolutely believe that we have this terrible connection to anything anti-black yes. and actually that's connected to some religious um oh, yeah. and in I don't know, doctrination. Mm-hmm. Um, I went to Creighton as a Jesuit, so mm-hmm. we were you like know. two classes away you from a, philo- a, a degree in theology. But um, just the, the dichotomy of white and black and yeah. just having that became white was good and pure and innocent yeah. and everything positive yeah. and black was Real. not. Well, I just think, And yeah. I want to say about like the Mexican piece is that actually I think it there's an unfortunate legacy of colonialism and of slavery across the Americas that actually puts um, people that have descended in what is called Latin America in between worlds because we were trained to hate darkness Mm -hmm. and actually have killed off black people in a lot of Mm -hmm. Latin American countries and have like furthered that racism and anti-blackness and have of course like through this through the beauty standard you mentioned and just colonialism you know the the literal like charts of like how white are you we've we've pushed you know these Colombian superstars that are the more white and more light-eyed and light-haired like into the spotlight because we know that that's like what the world wanted and so I think that particularly as as Latin people, Latinx people, and as Mexicans, like we have to do the work of okay, like I've not only been indoctrinated to think of myself as less than, it, and particularly in the U.S. and through like migration, economics, like, but also that I also look down on more indigenous people yes. and more Black people, Black. and this is all like in my brain. And so how do I, and so you got to do that work. Like, I don't care if you're a person of color, you still got to do that work of colorism, right? So I have a sister who's my half sister. Um, We have like different dads. She's half black and half Brazilian and Mexican. And when she was younger, she like was obsessed with baby dolls, just like how a whole bunch of kids are. But she never wanted like, my mom would always get her like the darker baby doll. And she was like, oh, it's dirty. Like, I don't want it. And it's, like, so sad because, like, you're programmed to think that, you know, being darker it means that you're dirty and that you're unclean, you know? And it's just... I don't know. Well, the black doll test is actually something that is still ringing true now. They've redone the test, and originally the test was... um, conducted to it, it well the information taken from the test after white and black kids were asked to well it was black kids they had to choose black dolls or white dolls and they had some adjectives good pretty better mm-hmm. best nice mean bad and um black kids were continuing to pick the black dolls as all the negative adjectives mm-hmm. and descriptors and um the that information was used to actually help um integrate schools and so brown versus board of education used that information to exemplify how this is separate but equal is not actually true because the internalized impact yeah. of um racism and segregation was actually negatively impacting black kids so well however we feel about <laughs> integration mm. and um the current status of our education system <laughs> um the kids are still picking yeah. um black as bad and i actually in omaha they're doing the curls on a black curly crew and they're going to be doing looking at the black doll test too so this whole month prepping for black history month um 
it's a it's a required conversation for me. I'd like to ask you a question about your work with Curls on the Block. Sure. Um, did you establish this organization and your like like does being mixed have anything to do with your work or was it is it coming from like an Afrocentric place or I don't know. I, I, don't really I know mean, why. I think to your point, we we are always thinking about who we are. <laughs> like, I, absolutely. My experience as the only um, uh, mixed kid in my family and um, having the only green eyes or whatever. I definitely got to see my siblings navigate the world also differently. And so I have an older sister and a younger sister and two younger brothers. And my sisters are very much, they look so much alike and um, have uh, more melanin than me. <laughs> Let's put it that way. They're definitely brown. And um, But to your question, um, absolutely being uh, mixed and having a black family. I grew up with my black family. My Puerto Rican side I knew and and went to all the holiday stuff because yeah. my mom was awesome at that and making sure I still had a connection with my abuela and my um, tia tios and whatever. And, um, but a- absolutely, Curls on the Block is, is coming from the lens of a black girl. However, all of the conversation is relevant, and I definitely, I have little white girls who have straight hair who love Curls on the Block, and their mom <laughs> love it, too, because they can tell what the point is, and the point at the end of the day is about internal confidence, and when you're confident about yourself, you're not going to be putting others down. I More academically, uh, John uh, Takaki has a book called A Different Mirror, and it was the first mm-hmm. time I understood uh, a little bit better the experiences of other folks, so like the Irish immigration and stuff, mm-hmm. and just just being able to see, oh, we are differences is what we're taught, yeah. but we actually have a lot of similarities about with our heritages yeah. and like upbringing, upcoming, and like the struggles a lot of people face, um, internment camps, stuff like that. Like, you, I, I just have witnessed the impact for sure of the young girls, and I, I work with the girls, but I have boys in the group too. The mm-hmm. mom just came in the other day, it was like. He just loves Curls in the Block. I was like, <laughs> and thank you for letting him participate. Yeah. <laughs> Can I, I want to say, that's such good work. I Just now I'm hearing about it, but it's amazing. Because the internalized piece is, I think, often under-discussed. Yeah. And this is, I think this is relevant, if I may, to your child. And to a lot of us who might pass, because we may look like we're getting the privileges and we may actually get the privileges of whiteness but there's something happening inside that's really really messed up and I don't think because people don't see us they'll say shit they'll do shit but like we're holding that in a way that's so detrimental to our being like because Kingston's gonna be like when he hears that stuff and sees that stuff he's gonna be thinking about you he's gonna be thinking about his grandparents and that messes with a human like in a way that I don't think we fully understand and it's spiritual it's relational like it's it as a Mexican-American as someone who's lighter complexion there's something else going on that we don't that we haven't quite figured out what to do with that. Mm. So, but to your point, yes, I think that, and I, I see it a lot with my my husband mm. because he's white presenting. So I don't use the term white passing because mm-hmm. I feel like pa- that to me it has a negative connotation as if you're trying to 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 escape from it. So, Imitation so, of life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what that's my association yeah. with it. But for me, like I say, white presenting for my mm-hmm. kid and my husband too. But the thing is, is like people who know, they can tell. Like they can tell. But if people who don't. They just yeah. assume he's like this white guy with curly hair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they don't know. So I have a quick question for like all three of you guys. Um, your self-esteem and like confidence <laughs> on being like mixed mm. and how that has been, how that has changed as you've gotten older and grown more into your identity of how you see yourself now. In like... The past maybe five or six years, like I always identified as black. And I say that in the film mm-hmm. and I kind of think it's hilarious, like looking at myself. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> it's like a whole other thing. It's a journey. I mean, it is, it is, but it's like going through that. I mean, I just, when I had my son, that was a, a thing for me because I was kind of like, well, how black can I be? Like, look at this baby. Like, he's got red hair and blue eyes. Like, this is wild, right? That was part of it for me. And also being married to my my husband and sort of kind of exploring this idea of, like, multiracial identity. Um, so now I still say I'm black, but I sometimes I'll say I'm mixed or I'll, I'll add that to it. I'll say black mixed because I don't – because of the same reason. The thing you said really hit me earlier when you said – oh, I don't know if I should say Puerto Rican and black or black and Puerto Rican. Mm. Like, 
So I always start with black because I know that there's this connotation that if I say I'm mixed, people are going to think that I think I'm better than them mm-hmm. because I'm mixed. Mm-hmm. And it's so real. And it, and especially in, in this place, place matters. Yeah. Yes. And in Denver, yes. um, they don't know what to do with me here. Yep. And it's, and, and it's over and over again. I keep experiencing that in the communities that I'm in. And... You but won. you know what it's I think, though, in some won. ways, and this is something I th- talk about for all of my projects, is I feel like Denver, in some ways, to me, is kind of like this microcosm of the United States, especially when you look at the racial demographics here. Mm-hmm. It does kind of line up nationally, right, where it's like 70% white, 30%, you know? It's, uh, <laughs> so I think now I feel some confidence in in being able to identify as as mixed race in some ways and 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 I do a lot of like so my my moniker right is the tan tigress that's what I go by and I got that nickname because my brother-in-law I was like I'm like a black panther I was like on some rant and he was like "Mm, more like a tan tigress and I was like (laughs) sick burn and like that is accurate you're right so so for me tan tigress productions and doing this work is is part of me like kind Mm. of claiming my own identity and just historically speaking like like my great grand great grandfather owned slaves and my great grandfather was a slave. You know what I mean? Like it's crazy. Like that's all the genes. It's all in there. Um, so yeah, so I feel pretty good now <laughs> in general. Well, and also that yeah. was a big thing for me with this working on this film, that mixed that bill of rights for people. Have you ever seen that before? The bill of rights for people of mixed heritage. So for it's me, so that, nice. I just thought it was a really powerful thing. I had never seen it. And I was like, Oh, it was, like the idea that I, I can change my identity over yes. time and it's okay. Yes. Like this is my body. This is the body I'm living in. This is what I'm doing. And if like, for me though, the real issue is when you try to say I'm white, mm. no one's letting us be white. Yeah. And so that's where it, it gets back into this like sick ideology of the United States. Right. So that's, that, I don't know if I answered anything, but this is, this is a good closing question. I feel yeah. like your, your, your uh, self-esteem. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> this is sad, but it's important. Is that like one of the first moments I knew it was different because we all have that moment yeah. was on the school bus. It's a cruel place. And yeah. someone's like, oh my gosh, your arms are so hairy. <laughs> you oh. know? Like, and, yeah. and, and, and yeah. every day is a conscious decision to see myself as beautiful and as like w- who I am, like in this body. And every time I go to the gym, like, it's okay. These curves are good. These curves are part of who I am. Like, this is, this is just like, this is just like auntie, you know, like this, you know, this is okay. This hair, like this is okay. Like, and it's better than okay, but at a minimum, like here I am, you know, and it's hard. Like it's hard in Denver when I go to work with a bunch of white people and I go to the gym with a bunch of white people and I go to the grocery store with a bunch of white people. Like my self-esteem has been a roller coaster, but thanks to Rebecca here. I have to say it. I mean, I have to say it. Like, you're bringing this conversation up and being in that room at the premiere, someone literally said, look around. Like, we're beautiful. We have freckles and we have, like, this complex texture of our hair. And, like, I want to cry thinking about it because I don't get to be in those rooms ever where I'm, like, look around. Like, we all are beautiful. Um, And so being mixed, it's... It's complicated, but um, I'm, I do want to see it in a positive light as like this is a part of who we're becoming as a nation at its best. Mm. We're all mixed up. Well, you know what? Uh, obviously, I work with kids and building self-esteem. Mm. You know, I was in pageants and stuff. So to be honest, like uh, confidence definitely came pretty naturally and then was reinforced because I was successful and I was very smart Mm -hmm. and identified that way as well. So there was not a conflict of, you know, what I was showing people and what they would label me. Now I, I'm not like questioning it or anything in the same manner. Um, as far as like thinking of it as an adult, I'm more cognizant of a couple of different things when I'm working with younger kids. Mm. And so I'm very intentional about when I train folks who are working with girls on the block as facilitators, um, I teach them about the power of their words. Their mm-hmm. their diction obviously is very vital because if you are accustomed to saying things like coffee will make you black, 
that's a problem. I'm not probably going to hire you, and I don't want you around kids until you can address that. I have my facilitators take the racial uh, the bias tests, which are still available. Um, people question it, but I'm like, okay, and it's a conversation starter. And yeah. it's not to compare, it's to understand where what's going on in you. And some of my black facilitators, they have found that their preference mm -hmm. is white. Mm -hmm. They are slightly prefer white. But mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, but that's not a charge against you. Mm -hmm. It's what are you going to do? to prevent that bias that you have mm -hmm. impacting the kids that you're working with. I also know when just reinforcing standards of beauty, like, yo, blonde is not the best color. Like, it doesn't have to be. <laughs> you can have black hair and be happy and, yeah. you know, whatever. But I think my confidence, I, I'm pretty settled, but um, – I just am more cognizant of the the way I'm in proximity to kids, you know, and the things that I'm saying and making sure upholding and supporting them while they're trying to figure this out. So appreciate yeah. that question. I found it so helpful. Um, I try to mess with my family with this a lot, but just like say it, just say it out loud. And like, I'd never say this, but like when I got, when a black guy was walking down the street, you know, like whatever that shit is, like say it yeah. because it's there. Like yeah. if it comes into your mind, you have to own it in a way that, yeah, like maybe that's not a good thing and let's start to work on that. Yeah. And so the yeah. next time it happens, you have a different reaction. Like you have to interrupt what's happening in your yeah. brain yeah. so that we're, we're rebuilding yeah. the way that we yeah. respond. Like the, I think, yeah, the bias test is a great starting point. One of my well, friends said that about her own family, that she's mm -hmm. challenging them. Is yeah. that what you really mean? Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and sometimes, I mean, say it, like, even just to yourself. Like, just yeah. do your own work, you know? Yeah. Like, obviously, you don't want to offload that labor to other people. Uh -uh. Mm -hmm. Anybody know what started today? The 2020 census. Yes. yes, we need to be posting about that because can't we identify how we want? Yeah, and but here's <laughs> but. the thing I saw, and everyone can fact check me because you know I'm not the news. Fact check. Um, but it's if you check multiracial and you try to write it in as other, you they won't you won't be counted. So what you need to do is you need to check your two races instead I, of multiracial. Yeah, I think I feel like we need to investigate that, and so that's like yeah. I'm putting a call out that's to America. Our homework. <laughs> Is to find out what's yes. going on with that because tell us. Yeah, that's real though because the other day <laughs> count me. I'm so cute. Me. You are cute. Yeah, but <laughs> I was always told not to do that because it diminishes like our numbers, like to check black because um. for the census for all practical purposes. So there is actually like this thing where um, people see. from like Central and South America are in the census putting Native American because they are Native yeah. to the Americas, which a lot of people don't agree with. But I mean. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It's deeper than that. And then ultimately, though, for me, what it comes down to as we wrap it up is that it's always rooted in white supremacy, the myth of white supremacy. And I feel like that is something that I wish people could understand. Like, I'm not talking about skinheads and shit. Like, that's not what I'm talking about when I talk about white supremacy. I'm talking about this idea of like internalized Every dominance. Day. Like, day. my favorite thing to say about it is white supremacy isn't in the water. It is the water. Mm. Right. And so like we don't even know and how it's like playing out even consciously subconsciously like uh, yeah i married a mixed race person but he's like real white why did i do that that was one of the things that comes up in the mm -hmm. film right mm -hmm. where Liz says i made my whole life and now i made this child that looks like how i wish i looked and you know what i do the same thing like i when i was little right my best friend mm -hmm. had his blonde hair and green eyes and i did not like the way that i looked next to her yep mm -hmm. and now mm -hmm. i have this blonde hair blue-eyed child you know, so so there's wow. there's a lot there's a lot there. Investigation to do. Yeah, about, so we're gonna yeah, do that. So if you happen to be watching this or seeing this or want some friends, you know, <laughs> hit us up, ask us questions. Off but color pod. Tell us about the event, the next event you're doing. So we are gonna screen that film again. Yay! Plug. Yeah, I'm gonna plug my own stuff, but we are gonna screen it on February 5th um, at the Bug Theater. So if you liked what you saw tonight, because that's also part of Off Color's yeah. mission, and what I do is I try to provide people an opportunity to hear conversations. They wouldn't necessarily hear yeah it's a way to just like speak to speak our truth thank you so much for listening to off color this is a community supported show so if you love this content make sure you tell a friend share like five star reviews only we're never kidding about that five star reviews only we are made possible by you our listeners 
If you would like to support us in a more in-depth way, you can join our Patreon at Tan Tigress Productions. You get exclusive bonus content. Um, we have really fun icebreaker questions that we're going to be putting up with our guests. We have little snippets, things that didn't make it in the pod because it was good, but it was just too long. There'll be some written content. There's behind the scenes from Sundance and from Running With My Girls film production. But make sure you follow us on all of our social media. We're on Facebook, Off Color Podcast. We're on the Twitters, Off Color Pod. If you're on our Patreon, you get um, you get discounts on Tan Tigress merch, Off Color merch, uh, Running With My Girls merch. Anything that I'm selling on my on my store, you get a discount depending on what level you're, you're um, contributing at. Yeah, you can give a dollar or a million. Like, we'll take either one at this point, honestly. <laughs> and cut.